So Jim Jones meets Adolf Hitler, all in a United States president. A psychiatrist and a professor of psychiatry, in, in fact, Dr. Justin Frank, discusses the dark psychology of Donald Trump. Check it out, leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. Uh, right now on the line with us is Dr. Justin Frank, the uh, uh, psychoanalyst and clinical professor at the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Science at George Washington University. He is the author of uh, numerous On the Couch books, Bush on the Couch, Obama on the Couch, Trump on the Couch. Um, Justin Frank MD is his Twitter handle. And uh, Dr. Frank, welcome back to the program. I'm, I'm curious if you think that um, Donald Trump, I, I just got this hit, I, you know, watching Trump at his rally uh, in uh, Tulsa and then yesterday in Arizona, today he's going to Wisconsin, large events, lots of people, no masks. Um, I, you know, I, I, as I think I've told you, one of my uh, closest friends, Armin Lehman, was the 16-year-old who delivered the news to Adolf Hitler that the war was over and then was sitting there in the Fuhrer bunker two days later when Hitler committed suicide. Uh, with him. He was, uh, he was a, a teenager. He wrote a book about it. Um, Armin has passed on now, but uh, we were very close friends. I, I, is this some sort of Hitler meets Jim Jones drama playing out? Well, uh, it's hard to uh, do exact analogies, uh, even though Santiana said those who uh, don't pay attention to history are c condemned to repeat it. I think that what we're seeing is the incredible conflict that Trump has had since his earliest childhood between being a builder and a destroyer. He would build things up and break them as a child regularly, all the time. And he, the, the part of him that is a destroyer has, I really think, gained ascendance over his uh, life. And once he started being able to fire people on The Apprentice and believe that he was the same person as the character on The Apprentice, he ended up becoming much more of a destroyer than a builder. So when he said, make America great again, uh, <clears throat> there was an unconscious opposite meaning, which has to do with uh, breaking down the America that we know. I think so. That it's like uh, make that makes it like a bit like Jim Jones, and uh, in terms of uh, the Kool Aid equivalent, I guess is the coronavirus and not wearing a mask. Uh, and the other thing is that one of the things about cult leaders and demagogues like Hitler uh, is that they create a state within a state. And certainly that is something that has happened between uh, Trump and Fox News and Hannity and Rush and all of his tweets, uh, he's created a very tight-knit uh, state of followers who will follow him off a cliff. So in that sense, I think there is uh, a familiar aspect of that. What is so appealing about him is his tremendous power to tap into people's pain, hurt, injury and need for revenge and need to destroy, need to attack. And that is very much like Jim Jones also. Uh, they're not the same at all, but there are certain uh, uh, kind of resonances between uh, those among those three people. <clears throat> my, my, my friend Armin told me that um, after Hitler got this news and before he committed suicide, that he was raging about how his, uh, his generals had, had let him down. And my recollection of uh, the Jim Jones story, and I, I'm, you know, this is just from memory, uh, but I was paying careful attention, as was much of the rest of the country, um, was that when uh, Congressman Ryan, as I recall, uh, showed up and then and, yeah. and uh, Jackie Spears, Leo and, Ryan. Congresswoman, yeah. yeah. Uh, when they showed up, that um, that was in part because there was he had a couple of people in his uh, camp down there in Guyana, in British Guyana, that uh, uh, you know whose family was sending them to essentially rescue them, and he felt that they had betrayed him. So for Jim Jones, it was about betrayal. For Donald Trump, it was about they, uh, or for Hitler, it was about betrayal and incompetence. Um, and, and in addition to blaming everyone below them and taking no responsibility themselves, they also decided that not only did they have to die themselves, 
but they had to take as many people with them as possible in the process. Um, is it too bizarre to think that that's, the, that's how Trump is thinking right now, at, at least on an unconscious level? At this point, nothing is too bizarre. That's the first thing I could say, even as a psychoanalyst. Uh, secondly, one of the things that is very true about betrayal is that the reason Trump lies, for instance, so much is because he felt lied to as a child. And I think that, that one of the things that became very clear, and I wonder what's going to happen if his niece's book ever comes out, Mary, um, is that he was lied to, I think, when his parents told him they loved him. So he became a liar to others and that he wants to fool others. And that's the whole thing with all the way with being an artificial person. He says, if you're very rich, people will trust you. People will believe you. That's his thing with uh, <clears throat> that he called truthful. Uh, I forgot what he called it. Truthful, truthful hyperbole. Uh, right. And then uh, and then on The Apprentice, when his willingness to fire people and the feeling of betrayal. Uh, I was thinking of the Phil Everly song, you know, I've been cheated, been mistreated from 1960 that Linda Ronstadt made famous. But it was basically about betrayal, that he feels betrayed. And I think that his base feels betrayed uh, by the country, by the government. And that was part of his big appeal. And the fear is of having whatever strength they have taken away. So there is a rage that's involved, and it is destructive. Right. So I agree with you. I think you're right on the on the just, on the just, money here. Just, just to boil, very just to boil it. Yeah, just to boil it down a little bit, I, we have about two minutes left. Um, it's sort of like he's he sees now that he, in all probability, is not going to get reelected. And which means that he's going to be prosecuted after he leaves office. I mean, this is what Bill Barr's uh, removal of the Southern District of New York prosecutor was all about, in my opinion. Um, and so, I mean, isn't suicide also an assertion of control? Um, is it, you know, is it possible that he's just saying, OK, I'm not going to let you guys take me down. I'm going to take myself out with COVID, thinking that he'll go down in history as a great martyr who died of this horrible disease? I don't buy that completely, and I'll tell you why. He's That's reassuring. He's too cruel and mean. He's too cruel and mean to kill himself. Mm -hmm. wow. He is just too mean. He doesn't want to give anybody that satisfaction. So that's the first thing. He's a very nasty, cruel person. He uses the word nasty over and over again about a reporter who asks any question that has anything to do with the truth, because the truth is his enemy. So I think that he would not, I don't see him as being self-destructive that way. There's a form of self-destructiveness that is at the end of the Narcissus myth where he is so busy looking at himself in the in the reflection in the lake stop and he dies he falls in and drowns so in that right. sense he's there's a way in which he's not taking care of himself properly and that may be what you see with the covid and the maskless but i think he's much more uh, to me he feels much more grandiose i think that he will he might be prosecuted and he's afraid of that but i think he'll go out in uh flames and uh develop all kinds of post-election uh, tweeting and uh, uh, revenge kind of things. He's not a quiet yeah. guy. Yeah, there's talk about his uh, companies.